Well, how do there, people in the view of us? So today, I'm going to be reacting to some vampires that... Well, it says five real vampires that actually existed. And I'm going to be giving my thoughts and feelings on it using my little toolbox of wizardry. And uh, yeah, and then I'm going to be giving my idea on whether I think vampires are real or whether I think they are fake. OK, right. So here we go. Let's jump on in. Let's get on into reacting to these videos, shall we, people? OK, so this video comes from Slapped Ham. Look at that. He's got 2.92 million subscribers. Yeah, I'm going to hit subscribe as well anyway. So he's got some wondrous videos on here. Let's make this nice and big and let's get into reacting to Slapped Ham's videos. How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Well, hello there, Callan. So I came across Slapped Ham and Callan from Casper Sites doing reaction videos to his ghost videos that he puts up. But he puts up a lot more than just ghost videos, does Callum of Slapped Ham. So here we go. This is me looking at his five real... Look, it says up there, five real vampires that actually existed. Here we go. Today we're talking about some really creepy vampire stories. From witnessed accounts of actual vampire attacks to whole towns plagued by the undead. Join us as we take a look at five real vampires that actually existed. If we can. Before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button Done. for more creepy content just like this. In 1912, the US state of Louisiana was gripped by fear after a bizarre spate of murders. The victims were all found dismembered in their own home, but there was little to no blood present at the scene. After police efforts to catch the murderer proved futile, rumours began circulating that the culprit may actually be a vampire. After several more bodies were discovered, the locals pleaded with Father Henry Jante, a local Catholic priest, for help. Jante met with a local voodoo priest by the name of Moses Amishan, and together they decided to hunt the vampire. The two holy men said set about mapping the crimes. They discovered that the murders seemed to follow the train line, leading them to believe that the person they were looking for might be employed by the railway. They began to monitor one particular station where they spotted a man neither had ever seen before. He was ghostly pale and appeared to have blood smeared on his clothing. Here's where the reports get even stranger. Well, those ticket collectors on trains, they are like vampires. I mean, they want every freaking penny off you, don't you? Especially if they if you haven't got your ticket. They just look at you and it's like their eyes are piercing your freaking soul. They're like, freaking, where's your ticket, mate? It's, it's a bit scary, isn't it? In an effort to learn the man's identity, it was said that the priests hunted down and destroyed several minions who confirmed that the man, August Delagrange, was indeed the head vampire they were looking for. The next night, the two men made their way to an isolated shack deep in the middle of the bayou. Delagrange was sleeping inside, presumed weak from lack of feeding. Jonte took a wooden stake and drove it straight into the heart of the beast. Jonte claims that Delagrange didn't make a sound, only opened his eyes wide and stared into the face of the priest before fading into hell. August Delagrange was believed to have murdered more than 40 people before he was staked by the priest. What? It was, was staked in the heart and then just vanished into, vaporised into hell. Seriously? Today, his skeleton can be seen on display at the Vampire Museum located on the outskirts of the French Quarter in New Orleans. Hold on, so what is it? Did he vaporise into hell, not leaving a trace, or have they got his freaking skeleton in New Orleans? N that doesn't quite... M that doesn't add up. Let me just listen to that bit one more time. There we go. ...people before he was staked by the priest. Today, he's eyes wide and stared into the face of the priest before fading into hell. Fading into hell. August yeah. Delagrange was believed to have murdered more than 40 people before he was staked by the priest. Today his skeleton can be seen on display at the Vampire Museum hmm. located on the outskirts of the French Quarter in New Orleans. This photo here is of a small wooden box said to contain the vampire's heart along with the wooden stake that killed him. Right, OK, so I think he said faded into hell. So maybe he just sort of, you know, his life drained from him. Well, it would do being freaking staked in the blinking heart with a... Yeah. Oh, for fudge's sake. Yeah, I've not got premium people. So, yeah, there's going to be the odd advert. Smite, what the fudge is that? OK, whatever. In 1726, a man named Arnold Pale was reported to have become a vampire in the small Serbian town of Medwenja. 
according to reports compiled by several Austrian military doctors who were sent to investigate the case, Pale was said to have become a vampire after falling to his death from a hay wagon. So that first one, do I think it's real or did I think it was fake? Um, that one, I'm going to go with you're having a Jeffrey. Yeah, so that one, having a Jeffrey kind of means you, know, you, you sort of... You're on one. You've sort of been smoking something you shouldn't of, basically. Yeah, so I'm going to go for you having a Jeffrey on that one, people. So yeah, for whatever reason, I can't pick it up from my blinking toolbox and drag it, though. So that's a bit of an oddity. Anyhow, yeah, let's press on on. So that one is you're having a Jeffrey, mate, that one. So here we go, second one, second one. It's already gone into the second one. I was hoping that they'd bring up a sort of like a cut screeny type thing. Say so number two or whatever. But no, they don't do that. The villagers said that Pale often claimed that he had been plagued by a vampire in his former homeland, but that he believed he had cured himself by eating soil from the vampire's grave and smearing himself with its blood. Shortly after Pale's death, members of the village began claiming to have been attacked by him. In each case, the witnesses mysteriously died just days later. When the local military heard of what was happening, they advised the villagers to open the suspected vampire's grave and examine the corpse. Despite being dead for 40 days, Pale's body was still intact and his veins contained fluid blood. His hair and beard had continued to grow and there was fresh blood in his mouth and on his shirt. The villagers concluded that Pale was indeed a vampire and drove a stake deep into his heart. As they did so, he's said to have let out a frightful shriek, groaning and bleeding. The villagers burned the body and then staked and burned the bodies of his four victims as well. About five years later, another spate of mysterious deaths began to plague the area. The locals believed that the first to die, a woman named Melitza, was to blame as she had once mentioned that she had eaten two sheep that had been killed by vampires. It was thought that those sheep were killed by the original vampire, Arnold Pale. Locals began reporting that the deceased were attacking them in the middle of the night. One girl by the name of Stanoska claimed she had been strangled in her sleep by a boy that had died nine weeks prior. She passed away just three days later. Households gathered together in the evenings, some members standing watch while others slept. The locals complained to the military who sent an infectious disease specialist named Glaser to investigate. The size of that freaking key, mate. Look at that. That's massive. What's that bloody unlock? That's, that's mentals. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, vampire stuff. That that guy in the coffin, well, you know, they, they staked him and he made like a, a shriek or whatever. You know, the body does make weird noise, especially if you do go and plunge something through a freaking chest cavity. So, yeah, and, and, the, and the mouth may have opened at the same time. So there's, there's explorations for that sort of stuff. And the fact that he hadn't decayed, if he keeps a body above ground for a, a length of time before you put it in the ground, and it depends how, how good the coffin is, whether any sort of, you know, pests and things can get in there to decay the body. But that's, that's, quite, that's quite normal. Okay. He found that many of the diseased showed no signs of decomposition. Okay, so th what we're seeing here in this picture is interesting. So they, these are actual real graves with these cages on. Now, a lot of people believe that these cages were put there to keep the vampires in the ground or to stop zombies from rising, basically. But we'll get to that later on as I'm covering off. Do I think vampires are real or fake? But yes, some believe that they're to keep people where they should be put in the freaking ground. And yeah, a lot of a lot of bodies have been found actually nailed into their coffins, and some even with scythes across the neck, which we'll get to in a bit as well. We're going to do some Google image searches in a moment, people. And some even had fresh blood in their mouths. He compiled a report recommending that the authorities should pacify the population by fulfilling its request to execute the vampires. Shortly after, a second commission consisting of three military surgeons, one of whom was Dr. Johann Flukinger, as well as several other military officers who were sent to investigate. They too found that several of the older bodies had not decayed and their chests and other organs were filled with fresh blood. The surgeons summarised their findings by stating that the bodies were indeed in vampiric condition. The suspected vampires had their heads cut off and their bodies burned. The others were reburied in their graves. The amazing thing about this case is that it's been reported on by so many experts. The disease specialist Glasser even sent the details of his findings to his father, also a doctor and a correspondent of a prominent Nuremberg journal. 
See, a lot of bodies this day and age, people, they get desanguinized. Basically, they have all their blood drained by embalmers before they're put into the ground. So, you know, if, if it was modern day and you found a body filled with blood after it had been drained of blood, now that would be a thing. But, um, yeah, back in the past then, they didn't do none of that. So blood, blood just doesn't disappear, you know. It, yes, there are cavities that it will come out of, but you will still find blood in bodies sometime after they've been buried. He wrote a letter to the journal detailing the case and the reports of both Glasser and Flukinger were reprinted in several articles. But then saying that, they said fresh blood. Now, after you've passed away, blood doesn't take long to start smelling a bit different. Yeah, I mean, you may notice that even when you go to butchers and buy some meat or whatever. So, yeah, it's... um. That's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting, but let's, let's, I mean, considering it was doctors that were sort of looking at these bodies and making that sort of analysis. Could this small Serbian town have actually been plagued by vampires? Or did all these experts somehow get their reports wrong? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Hmm, well that one, I'm gonna go with... What the fudge? What the fudge, mate? Because there was doctors that examined these bodies and they all came to the same conclusion that they were in a vampiric state. But you know, that, that, that kind of denotes that there definitely are vampires out there and they're a thing, you know? That takes a little bit of believing, doesn't it? I don't know. That's, I'm still gonna go with what the fudge. It's not going to get a fudge in real, mate, because if it was modern times, I'm fairly sure modern science would prove that they're not freaking vampires, but we've got to go from the time that they were spotted or, or, or suggested. It was a great party. Another advert. Yeah. Sorry, people, Someone's these people are not the vampires. They're not. No, they look like it, but they're not. In 1954, it was reported that a mysterious seven-foot-tall vampire with iron teeth was terrorising the residents in the Gorbals district of Glasgow, Scotland. After the... Okay, well, this one's closer to home. This is over in freaking UK, at least, the United Kingdom, where I'm based. This little chap in the shorts who's freaking chest cavity showing. Well, actually, no, he's got a shirt on. Look, there's, there's like a freaking... That, yeah. <laughs> it's like, come and eat me, vampires. Yeah, look at this guy. He actually looks like he's got freaking fangs. I don't know what's going on there, but that's a creepy freaking photo, isn't it? It really is. In fact, the whole thing's a little bit creepy, actually. Right, anyhow, so let's, let's press on. There is a card that pops up down here. It doesn't come up on the screen. Number three. It's just down in the bottom left corner. I didn't see it because I got my mic. I don't know whether you can see my mic at the moment. No, you can't, can you? But my mic is right here. It was covering that element of the screen. A vampire was said to have killed two young boys in the area. Hundreds of school children descended on the local cemetery. Armed with knives and wooden stakes, the children searched the graveyard for the vampire. Even the police were powerless to stop the children who only left the cemetery after it began to rain heavily. They continued their search for the elusive vampire for the next two nights. Build them a freaking playground. Look at them, leapfrogging gravestones, climbing up the freaking trees. They just want some slides and some swings. Freaking give them slides and swings. The story made headlines all around the world. Soon the whole country was in the grip of a full-blown vampire panic. Local parliamentarians believed that the source of the bizarre rumours could be traced back to a popular American comic book of the time. As a result, they championed the 1955 Children and Young Persons Harmful Publications Act, which was eventually passed. The act, which still stands today, prohibits comics that are believed to be harmful to children. While it was never clear whether or not the children ever found the vampire, several of those who descended on the cemetery in 1954 can still recall the bizarre tale. One vampire hunter, Ronnie Sanderson, said, I was there, I was in... Well, now we know where the concept for Harry Potter came from. It's right frickin' there. Look at that chap. You just need a lightning bolt on his frickin' head. In fact, that little strand of hair there, just draw a little line from that. Boom! Harry Potter. There we go. Done, diddly and dusted. What the fudge has happened to your eye, love? And what the... Oh, my days. Just there, casually in the background, having a little... Oh, my days. Okay, that's just just, just frickin'... Where'd you get these pictures from, Callum? They're frickin' gonna give me nightmares. In the graveyard when I was eight years old. I've been telling my wife about the vampire for years and she's never believed me. Okay, so that's that one over. We've got the card coming up right there. That one, I'm, I'm going to go with arson biscuits, basically. It, it's, it's, I think it's a medley of truth and fiction woven together. You know, it's, 
yes, there probably was the killing of kids or whatever, and these kids did go to the graveyard to hunt a vampire. They didn't actually say what they came across or what they were looking for inside of the cemetery. They didn't even say who they thought the culprit was, did they? So, what the, what the fudge, you know? At, yeah, so that's a kind of an arse biscuit and a what the fudge in one. It's it's a bit of a, a bit of a weird one. That one I'm just going to write off as just being, yeah, maybe kids reading too many comic books, but then passing the law to ban freaking dangerous comics. God. Yeah, at least it was going on back then. It's still going on now with all this cancel culture BS, isn't it? It's OTT. Well, maybe that's where it bloody started. Thanks, vampire hunting kids. First published in 1746, the treatise on the apparitions of spirits and... The undead... Oh, the undead dinner guest. Great, okay. <laughs> ...and on vampires or revenants of Hungary was an extensive investigation into the paranormal written by Benedictine monk Anton Augustin Kelman. The book covered all manner of the supernatural from angels, demons and ghosts to witchcraft and sorcery. The work analysed accounts of the various topics from mythology and folklore, as well as the Bible and historically documented accounts. It was divided into three tomes, the second of which contained 63 chapters all dedicated to vampires and the undead. I don't know, mate. When, when somebody puts up like an old bit of script and it's all nicely written, like that we just saw in that previous sort of pit image, I'm like, oh, this could be real. I don't know what it is when you see actual literal evidence. It's, it's like, oh, that looks old. That looks real. One documented account was that of a soldier who, in 1730, was lodging at a peasant's house in Hungary. The soldier claimed that he was sitting with the homeowner and his family for dinner when a man that he didn't know entered the house and sat down. The soldier noticed that the homeowner appeared to be fearful of the unknown dinner guest. The next morning, the homeowner was discovered dead. The family told the soldier that the strange man that sat at the table the night before was actually the father of the homeowner who had been dead for more than 10 years. The soldier informed his regiment and the army began to investigate. Okay, if your dead father of 10 years rocks up at the dinner table, you're going to look a little bit more than fearful. And you're definitely not going to keep that piece of information to your freaking self, are you? You're, you're going to be freaking panic stricken. You're going to turn around to that guest, take them to a sign, say, excuse me, mate. You're that guy's in the dinner table. That's my dad. Fr that's my dead freaking dad. He's a freaking zombie or a lich or worse. Well, I think we need to do something about this. You wouldn't just say, "Oh, okay," and just look a little bit fearful, would you? Honestly, seriously, is this a thing? There's being polite and then there's just being freaking stupid. The captain of the infantry, along with several officers and a surgeon, interviewed members of the man's family, along with other residents of the village. The accounts matched those of the soldier and the father's corpse was exhumed. They found that the father, although dead for more than 10 years, still had the blood flow of a living man. The captain ordered his head to be cut off and his remains reburied in the tomb. Sometime later, the same captain received information that another man who had been dead for more than 30 years returned to his family's home on three separate occasions. Each time, he was said to have sucked the blood of one of the members of the house. Firstly his brother, then son, and finally a servant. All three men were reported to have died immediately after being attacked. He had rabies. That's, that's, that's pretty much that. He's probably got freaking rabies. Once again, the man was suspected of being a vampire and his corpse was exhumed. Just like the previous case, the man's body was found to have a living blood flow, despite the fact that he had been dead for more than 30 years. The captain ordered a large nail to be driven through the man's temple and his corpse placed back into the grave. Okay, well they have been unearthing quite a lot of skeletons in many parts of Eastern Europe, pretty much, and other places, where they've been finding these sorts of stakes driven into people, nailing them into their coffins. So this was quite a, a thing back then of people rising back from the dead, or the fear of them doing so, so nailing them into their freaking boxes so they don't go anywhere. So yeah, some of these accountings could have some sort of truth in their day, um, but that's a bit freaking weird, isn't it? And to say they had natural blood flow... It, I don't know. I don't know. Are they just sort of bloated and keeping their blood with inside of their person? It is hard to say. 
Before we get to the number one spot and learn about a famous vampire case that was reported in the media just a few decades ago, Ooh. remember to hit that subscribe button done. and turn on channel notifications. Haven't done that. That bit. way you'll be up to date with all our latest content. But I will. We've got Most another advert. This, he looks like a freaking vampire. He's a vampire in 2022. This photo, taken sometime between the late 1960s and early 70s, was captured in the Highgate Cemetery, London. The dark robed Ooh, figure London. in the centre of the image is believed by many to be a king vampire of the undead, said to have been a Romanian nobleman brought to London by his devoted followers. In 1970, sightings of the vampire grew. On Friday the 13th of March, two men, Sean Manchester and David Ferrant, vowed to find and destroy the evil creature. The media reported the story and within two hours a mob of hunters from all over London began swarming over the lock gates of the cemetery to confront the beast. Hide Romanians, hide! <laughs> for fuck's sake, seriously? There's a picture of a Romanian standing in the graveyard and that's enough for a freaking load of vampire monster hunters to team up, is it? Right, okay. Um, maybe this is the poster child that England needs. Maybe this is the story we need to stop people coming over. Romanians made on, on rubber dinghies from France. It, it could work. Yes, watch out, Romanian vampires. We're ready for you. And just, just have a picture of a load of nutters. Yeah, okay, brilliant. Manchester claimed he led a group to one particular catacomb where they managed to climb inside through a hole in the roof. He said they opened several coffins and placed garlic and holy water inside. Some months later, the charred and headless corpse of a woman was found near the catacomb that Manchester said he had entered. Ferrant was arrested soon after in the churchyard next to Highgate Cemetery, carrying a crucifix and a wooden stake. Shortly after Front was arrested, Manchester and his group returned to the cemetery. This time they forced open the doors to another family vault where they believed the coffin of the vampire had been moved to. Just as Manchester was about to stake the body inside, he was persuaded to leave the vault by several members of the group. Three years later, Manchester claimed he again encountered the same corpse. This time it was in the cellar of an abandoned house in the Highgate area. Believing it had to be the vampire he was searching for, he staked and burned the body. While mysterious sightings are still reported at the Highgate Cemetery to this day, no one knows for sure if the King Vampire of the Undead still lurks within the grounds. Was this cemetery actually home to a real vampire? Was the beast destroyed, or could it still lie waiting in a sinister slumber, soon to awake and take its next victim? Well, that's the end of another episode. Well, that was that was an interesting one. I mean, it does sound like that Manchester chap has committed multiple murders, though. <laughs> Probably on unsuspecting Romanian visitors to the UK. You know, be them legal or not. But, but, the, but the actual fudge. That, that one is a what the fudge. That, that, there's not a single one in there that I've said, that's a fudging real vampire. There's not. There's not a single one that I've said, that's a real freaking vampire. We need interview of a vampire standards, Callum. Sorry, mate. But yeah, that, I'm not signing up for that one. But you know what I will do? I'm going to hit that notification bell. There we go. Boom. It's now wrong, okay? There you go. I do like your channel and the way you present your information. You've got some awesome images there, even though some of those are freaking hideous <laughs> especially those ones that yeah the bucket in the street with the kids and uh, it's just creepy creepy i don't know what it is about black and white images of kids but that it's like children of the corn from freaking you know that old still it's stephen king stuff anyway i did mention that we've got some pictures of vampire graves and things to look at so you see these cages built over graves and you would think yeah that's to keep him in or them in they're evil evil keep away keep away evil yeah no no that these cages were placed over graves to stop grave robbers of all things so yes fresh cadavers apparently if you dug them up while they were still fresh and had blood in them or whatever and you took them to the local university you could sell them <laughs> And not only that, if they were wearing any gold watches, rings or jewellery or anything like that, boom, you're instantly rich. So yes, grave robbing was quite a big thing and still is. And a lot of people do opt to have cages put over their freaking graves to protect their body from being dug up and being sold on and butchered by freaking uni grads. 
<laughs> it's seriously it's it's not to do with vampires it's not to do with anything it's sort of like um strange i mean look at them there's all different cages and so oh look there, there, there's probably are pictures of like you know fact checkers that have probably done their homework on this already but yes a lot of these caged graves they're to keep away grave robbers i know it's quite mundane quite boring and to believe that vampires with vampire hunting kits go to these places uh, no it's just not a thing and look at this one so this was like a guillotine that was put over the neck of an individual yeah just in case and it's actually a female it's a, it's a lady um this grave in, in particular but it, it's to stop her from when she sits up it would decapitate her if she tries to rise from the grave a lot of actual skeletons they actually decapitated the head thinking that they might be a vampire and placed it in between the legs which was another common thing that they've been finding in a lot of graves of people that they were suspected to be vampires yep yeah? or they put bricks in the mouths and all sorts of other stuff you know if they believe that they were vampires again another thing was the metal spikes to nail them into the coffins now all this stuff has been found inside coffins is it because they were vampires who knows i mean a lot of the time there isn't the story or backstory to go with the person that's been buried i mean yes we knew this was a female from a bone structure and so forth and so on and look at the size of that gnarly freaking tooth so a lot of people thought she might be a vampire because of this elongated freaking tooth that she had so yeah they thought she was a vampire, they stuck that over the throat. But they're only going by the skeletal remains and what evidence they had inside the grave. Sadly, there was no story that went with this person to say that she might have been drinking blood from people inside of the well. So, do I believe that there's vampires? Yes and no. I don't believe there's vampires that we come across like in like Twilight or Count Dracula and all those sort of accounts of people going around drinking blood from people. I believe that there are modern day vampires though because this is actually really a thing <laughs> okay so young blood so using people's blood mainly teens or younger yes to sort of revitalize yourself yeah so the people are queuing up for freaking transfusions and they call it young blood transfusions and yeah they're taking blood from youngsters and put and put it into themselves it's freaking mental i think sandra bullock has had something done using foreskins or something but it's it's weird so yeah look you can see here that's like a, a young mouse old mouse and a old mouse with young blood treatment you can go through you can find news articles and all this if you think i'm making it up i'm seriously not there are there's celebrities queuing up for this stuff look there's there's sandra bullock's name mentioned there but i'm fairly sure i read a story a little while ago that she was using some sort of i don't know kids foreskins or something okay oh well, here we go sandra bullock and her korean baby foreskin rejuvenation treatment it, you can script this stuff mate you know oh dear i remember alex jones banging on about yeah they're taking blood from youngsters to make themselves younger forever and people were like you're a conspiracy theorist alex jones yes deplatform him well they deplatformed him for many a reason not just this but yeah it's now a thing and it's actually put out there is would you like some of this no no i freaking wasn't yeah <laughs> What the actual fudge? So this, this is fudge in real, mate. This is actually real. You can you can look into this as much as you like, and it's all going to come back with yes. This is this is this is freaking real, <laughs> and it's freaking scary. So yes, we've got our two point zero version of vampires. I think I saw a um, thumbnail that actually said that on it. Actually, as we were scrolling through, so it's it's it's, it's not me being original there. But yeah, there we go. Vampires two point zero. <laughs> yeah. So this is the latest version of vampires people in the view of us so yes do i believe that the olden style version of vampire is real no no i don't i don't believe in the like the bram stoker type of dracula that have gotten weird gnarly powers and don't like sunlight and you know hate garlic and all that sort of shenanigans that's just the french no they love the garlic then but yeah it's <sighs> It's an oddity, isn't it? I, but yeah, I think modern day vampires, <laughs> these celebrities that want baby blood and all sorts of other baby parts injected into them. Yes, they're freaking real. So yeah, the, the elite of the world, let's let's just call it as it is. Yes, the super rich that can afford this treatment because it's it's pretty costly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not for the likes of the working class. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be getting any sort of blood transfusion. But would I want one anyway? No, even if it did actually prove to give you an extra 
extra 10 years of life. No, it just it just feels morally freaking wrong. So, so there we go, people. I don't know where you sit on this. And, you know, If you're watching this right now, I would have done a little mini poll towards the middle of this to say, is it real or is it fake with vampires? And I would have encouraged you, well, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully I'll put the poll results if they are in the pinned comment. But until next time, people, and that's where I am with that. So Callum's videos, no, I don't think any of those five were real. There was one amongst them that was, it had some air of a reality to it, but the rest of them were a little bit crazy, weren't they? Yeah, so there we go, people. That's me on vampires. My reaction to vampires and whether I think they're real or whether I think they're fake. But um, there is a lot more that I could have covered off. It's like all the bi bi biblical references of vampires, like the Mark of Cain and him being cast into the realm of Nod. And there's a Bible banned story, which is Lilith, the first wife of Adam that was also banned to the realm of Nod, and whether they became the Lamias and the vampires of today, and whether they could still be walking the earth. You know, if you believe in the Bible, you believe in angels, you believe in demons, then yes, if you read those stories and you read them quite literally... Yes, in the context, if you are quite devout, you might have to accept the fact that there could be vampires when it comes to, say, the Mark of Cain and the Lamias and Liliths and all that sort of shenanigans. But yeah, that, that's going off on a random tangent right at the end of there. But yeah, that's something to Google, isn't it? There you go, people. So now I'm pretty much done. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'm hoping to do more of these in the near future. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.